Okay, let's talk about the hot topic of these days. I'm speaking, of course, about Andrew Huberman and the article that came out on the New York magazine just a few days ago. In the article, the famous podcaster has been depicted as a master manipulator, a narcissistic liar, an abuser, the incarnation of evil itself, we could say. In the past three years, according to the article, Huberman has been juggling between six different relationships at the same time, giving the illusion to each and every girl that they were exclusive. The article goes on explaining the situation in details from the point of view of Sarah, it's not a real name of course, and it was Huberman's girlfriend at that time. Huberman has also been accused of spreading pseudoscience with the sole purpose of selling supplements and other sponsored products that he talks about in the podcast. His podcast is also filled with actual protocols that are there just for the sole purpose of Huberman's enjoyment of having control over your life. So is Huberman a master manipulator or a red pill hero? One thing for sure, his protocols are working because if he can manage to juggle six relationships at the same time at 48 years old, he is really something. I wouldn't define him as a red pill hero, given that his strategy eventually backfired and he ended up getting caught in the web of lies that he himself built. Underneath it all, I sense the will to help people for free. Actually, free of cost, as he says. A 48-year-old man should know better, for sure. And if you spend your time building a web of lies and bending reality, you should know that sooner or later he's gonna snap back into your face. And that's exactly what happened to him. So who is Andrew Huberman then? For sure, he is a high-status male, he's tall, muscular, he's wealthy. No wonder that he's a catch. I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have any problem to get as much casual sex as he can manage. So I don't feel the need for this web of lies. I don't feel the need for building it, really. So why is done it? I think in the end of the day, Huberman is a big man with a big shadow. Let's assume for a moment that everything written in the article is real. And I'm not sure about it. For the reason that every single girl is depicted as, a, as an helpless victim. But I don't see a great abundance of helpless princesses going around in real life, I don't know about you. But for the sake of the argument, let's assume that everything that's written is real. The problem is certainly not the promiscuity. For what I care, Huberman could have 60 girls at the same time. The problem are the lies. The problem is deception. The problem is manipulation. I don't know why he's done that. There's probably something in him that enjoys it. That's why I say that Huberman is a big man with a big shadow. He looks just like someone who has an addiction. Someone who has a good life, but an addiction gradually takes control over his life until it spirals out of control and everything shatters into pieces. Now, I don't think that's the actual case for Huberman because his channel is going up in terms of follower. I think one of his products dropped him, but that's about it. He will survive anyway, he'll be fine. Kind of disappointed by the human being that he is, because, you know, he emanates this persona that is in control of his life, enforcing his protocols, and actually boring to use a word that he uses, because he doesn't drink, he doesn't party too much. So, you know, just a fit, straight-edge, wealthy person that is 100% in control of his life. But the reality behind the camera is that nobody is in control of his own life. And we all have our own flaws as human beings. So that's no surprise that Huberman has some. He always says that he's had a complicated past. And maybe that's part of the issue here. Maybe now he's going to have to dig deeper into what's happening. Or maybe he'll just keep going business as usual. I don't know what, what he's going to choose. I think he's going to be around for a while. I wanted to say this because I am actually a follower of his podcast, that a few things that he says have been really helpful for me and actually going to make a video that touches on this topic. At the end of the day, I feel that he can really spread good information that can put you in a better position in your life, better in control of your own mood, of your own emotions, of your own nutrition, of your own fitness, mental and physical. Lastly, let's not forget where the article is coming from. The New York magazine has a sub-magazine called The Cut that at the end of January 2024 
published um, an article titled something like A Practical Guide to Polyamory. You know what I'm talking about, right? The practice where you drive your wife around so she can be banged by other dudes and you can do the same with the other dudes' wives. So you can all be happy and share the same bed and the same STDs. The article has been sickening to read because even if it's been written with purple and blue hair dye instead of ink, meaning that it tries to paint a really positive picture of polyamory, and it goes into it in details, describing each and every flavor and giving real-life examples. Even if it tries to paint this positive picture, you can see the pain of the people involved coming right into your face, under the surface. These people are desperately trying to enforce some kind of rule to retain whatever is left of exclusivity. The rules go something like you have to wear your wedding ring at all time, no sex in our shared bed, things like that. But in the end of the day, every rule ends up being broken and everyone ends up being miserable, in my opinion. But they say they are happy, so call me whatever you want, call me an old fuck, call me old fashioned. I don't give a damn, that's what I think about polyamory. But it's not my life, so if you want to go down that road, go right ahead. Nobody's going to stop you. In this day and age, almost every sexual practice is not only allowed, but also celebrated as a great accomplishment, as a great step towards human freedom. Anyway, make of that what you will. So in the end, this is what I think about the matter. Huberman is not a master manipulator because I sense in him the will to help people. Huberman is not a red pill hero because a 48 year old man should know better. I'm sure he could have had casual sex being open and upfront about it without the need of this complex web of lies. Huberman is just a human being as tall as every one of us who tried to bend the fabric of reality and now is being punished for it by his own deeds. And I don't think that New York Magazine has the moral authority to judge anyone's private life, really. Anyway, let's see how this is going to play out. And take care. See you next time.